Hey guys, it's Yuran and in today's video we're going to solve cheapest flights within K stops. It's labeled as a medium difficulty, but in my opinion it's more on the hard side. Either way, uh, it's definitely doable. So we're going to solve it with Dijkstra. If you're not familiar with Dijkstra, I recommend you watch my Dijkstra video first. I explain the algorithm and the code. So uh, let's get straight into the description. So there are N cities connected by some number of flights. You are given an array of flights where flight I indicates that there is a flight from city from I to city to I with cost price I. You're also given three integers, source, destination, and K. Return the cheapest price from source to destination with at most K stops. If there is no such route, return minus one. So we're given this weighted directed graph where the weights represent uh, prices and we want to find the lowest cost we can pay to get from the source to the destination with at most k stops. So uh, let's look at an example. We get this graph, the source is node 0 and the target is node 2 and k is 1. Now there are two ways to get from 0 to 2, right? We can go this way directly and this will have a cost of 500 with zero stops, right? We didn't stop anywhere. And the second option is to go this way and this would have a cost of 200 and it will have one stop, this one. Now because we're allowed up to one stop, we're okay choosing the second option. So in this case we would choose this option and the output would be 200. But if k was 0, uh, we would have to choose the longer path here because it has zero stops. And this is exactly the twist of this question. I mean if we didn't have this k stops constraints, this would be a plain shortest path problem that could be solved with an off-the-shelf Dijkstra function. We're still going to use Dijkstra to solve it but it does require some work. So uh, the main reason that Dijkstra could not work here as is is its greediness, right? In Dijkstra, once we pop a node from the heap, we mark it as visited and we will never visit it again, uh, meaning we will never uh, consider another path for it. And that is because it is guaranteed that the first time you pop a node from the heap, you already have its best distance. You already found it. So there's really no point in considering any other options. But in this problem, you might need to reconsider the path that we chose, even though it has the lowest uh, distance, because we might prefer to get to a node with the longer distance but with fewer stops. Like in this example, our source node is 0 and our target node is 2 and k is also 2. So we want to find the shortest distance from 0 to 2 with at most 2 stops, right? So the shortest path would actually be this one with a distance of 6, but it has too many stops, right? It has 3 stops and our limit is 2. The path that we really want here is the next shortest path, this one. Its distance is 7 and has 2 stops which is within our limit. So the correct output for this uh, example would be 7. But if you run Dijkstra on this graph, we would first look at the direct neighbors of node 0, right, the source. We will find this path to node 1 with distance 5. And this path to node 3 with distance 2. Then for our next move, we will greedily choose the closest node between these two. Uh, so that will be node 3 because 2 is less than 5. And uh, we will look at the neighbors of node 3 which is node 1, and we will find a better path to node 1. We find that we can reach it with distance 4 instead of 5. So we discard this longer path and we will never consider it again, which is exactly the problem here because remember the path that we want is this one. So discarding this part guarantees that we will never find the correct answer. Now in short, the solution for this is to allow revisiting of nodes, right? But if we just visit and revisit every node as they come without a clear strategy, the runtime will increase dramatically and it's not going to be accepted by lead code. Uh, you will get a time limit exceeded. So we can improve this runtime by only revisiting nodes if one of the following applies. One is we just found a path with a shorter distance, just like regular Dijkstra. And two is we just found a path that has a longer distance, but it has fewer stops. If you do that for this example, uh, we will not discard this path because yes, it has a longer distance than this option, but it has less stops. So it doesn't uh, lose its relevance just because we found a shorter distance. We know that we might need it in the future as a fallback in case that this uh, shorter path leads to too many stops, which is exactly what happens in this example. Now let's walk through the changes that we have to make to the original Dijkstra code uh, to satisfy these new constraints. So we have the original Dijkstra function here. It's in C++, but you'll be able to follow in any language as long as you know how the original Dijkstra algorithm works. So the first thing we have to do is get rid of this visited array, right? Because we want to allow revisiting of nodes. Uh, so there's no point in tracking uh, which nodes were visited and which were not. So uh, we take this one out and these lines and this. 
the second change that we need to make is not only track the uh, shortest distance to each node, we also want to track the current number of stops. So we're going to need another array for this. And we're going to call it stops. And we'll initialize it to in max, just like the original distance array. Now we will also need to add the current number of stops to each element of the heap. So instead of it being a tuple of two integers, it would have to be a tuple of uh, three integers. We'll add it here, also, and here. And now when we pop an element from the heap, uh, we will get the current distance, the current node, and the current number of stops. And for each neighbor, the next stops will be the current stops plus one. Because we added the neighbor to the past, so that's one more node. Now to keep track of this count for each node, we would have to update the stops array every time we push an element to the heap. So just like we updated the dist array, we would update the stops uh, array at the next node to be the next stops. And of course, we also want to add it to the heap element. We also want to update the stops array before we push the source to the heap. So we do that here, just the same as we did the dist array. And the number of stops in the optimal path from the source to itself will of course be zero. We'll also add a zero here. And then the third change is that in regular Dijkstra, we consider a path to be potentially better only if it has uh, a shorter distance than what we had. So if next dist is less than the distance we had. But in this question, we also want to consider paths that have uh, fewer stops. So if next stops is less than what we had. Now in this case, the distance is higher uh, so we don't want to update the dist array. We want the dist array to only contain the uh, minimum distances, but we do want to update the stops array and we do want to also push the same element to the heap. So we will copy these two lines. And last thing we need to add is to not expand uh, paths that already have k stops, right? Um, so right here, if uh, the current stops are already k, we want to continue uh, without looking at the neighbors because adding the neighbors of this node would only increase the number of stops and we're already at our limit so uh, we shouldn't do that. Um, actually it should be k plus one because uh, this count also includes the last node in the path and we don't want to consider it. We only want the middle part so uh, k plus one. And by the way we should take k as an argument and that should be it for the uh, Dijkstra function. Uh, if we go on to the main function, let's just construct the graph with our graph implementation. So all it does is construct a graph from this list of edges. And then we return what we get from the Dijkstra function. The Dijkstra function takes in the graph, the source, destination, and k. Let's try this. Okay, looks good. Let's try to submit it. Okay, that's pretty good. So uh, we're done with this question. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or requests. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.